Badiliko, the Swahili word for change, is also the name of technology giant Microsoft's latest ICT education project. This one-of-a-kind project is set to roll out in six sub-Saharan Africa countries, targeting over 100,000 learners across the various territories. Joining me now to explain how the project works is Jambak Shandegi, Citizenship and Partners in Learning Program Manager for Microsoft West, East Central Africa and Indian Ocean Islands region. Quite a mouthful. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Natasha. Now, one of the countries Microsoft's Badiliko Digital Schools project is rolling out is in Kenya. And in my research, I, c I came across some startling facts, um, including that in 2009, 30% of class 8 pupils could not read English work suitable for class 2 pupils, and that 30% um, of all students can barely read class 2 work. Also, that it's the public school system is notorious for absentee teachers in overcrowded classrooms. How is the Badaliko project hoping to address some of these projects? Um, we, we have built this project um, with partners who bring their expertise. Um, but, uh, British Council brings their expertise in terms of learning and English literacy. Uh, Microsoft is bringing their expertise in terms of content, material, and the, the great work that we've been doing in upskilling teachers uh, and training them to be able to integrate uh, technology within teaching and learning. Uh, so it's really building on uh, the strength of each organization to be able to uh, respond to the needs in uh, the six African countries where we're working in, in this uh, pilot phase of the project. Uh, Kenya, as you said, uh, is really in need of our um, intervention. Uh, we have been working there for the past uh, 16 years. And uh, with this project, we are aiming at transforming the education landscape in Kenya and in the other five countries uh, in this project. Now, you mentioned that you guys are bringing the content. Which software packages and which projects is Microsoft working on in these specific territories? Uh, we are bringing all the materials that we have, uh, that we have developed in uh, the integrating ICTs within teaching and learning. We're also bringing our technology in, in, uh, in the multipoint server uh, tool that we have um, promoted. Um, it, it provides a cost saving of 66%. Um, it also provides uh, connectivity and, and um, it, uh, it enables us to access as many learners as possible. Uh, so it's a one-to-many types of teaching. Um, so it, it's really bringing in a lot of n innovative ideas in terms of integrating ICT in teaching. It's also providing the platform for teachers to um, learn from each other, to be able to become champions um, of uh, technology within teaching. Um, it, it, it also um, provides the, the learners with access to technology, to internet, to all the amazing array of information that is available to them. Now, Africa, and especially Sub-Saharan Africa, is notorious for its lack of connectivity. Yes. How is this project mitigating this problem? Um, I think the, the strength of this project is that it, we have um, brokered alliances with um, the private sector, with organizations and with governments who are keen to transform and integrate technology within the education sector. Um, we, we, have, uh, we are using um, technologies such as the solar, solar powered um, laptops and, um, and uh, computers. Um, we're also using Wi-Fi, long-range Wi-Fi, wherever relevant, because um, we are working within urban and rural areas in this project. So it's really looking at providing um, options and scenarios that will enable different schools to access technology and access internet and all the benefits that it brings. Now that was going to be my next question. You mentioned you're working in rural and urban schools. Yes. What are you looking at when identifying the schools that most need this type of project? Mm -hmm. Um, we are looking for uh, leadership from these schools, first of all. I mean, it has to be a grassroots 
type of engagement. Uh, so we are really kind of entering into a partnership with these schools. Um, and we, we want them to really be excited about this project. So a lot of work has gone into um, engaging with the education leaders within different schools, um, identifying those who have the ca capacity, willingness, and capability to take it on. Uh, so we are looking at private and public schools, primary and secondary schools who have that willingness and who have the, the capability to become hubs within their communities. So in the end, we are hoping that these, these digital hubs or these uh, centers that we are creating within these schools will also provide benefits to the wider community. Now you guys are in the pilot phase right now. How long did it take? Um, with your uh, allegiance and alliances with the British Council and the Schools Federation to get this project off the ground and how much investment has gone into it to date? Well, these discussions started in 2010. I mean, it's really been inspired by a lot of the work and uh, the alliances that we formed in Haiti with the British Council and also in, in terms of our engagement, our commitment to the Clinton Global Initiative to create digital hubs uh, or labs uh, within um, uh, communities around the world. And uh, so it, it, it was really kind of a, um, a long uh, kind of uh, um, collaboration really um, based on um, proven um, pr um, initiatives. So it is something that has been done before um, and it is uh, something that has had success and we are taking it on in Africa and enabling it to have wings uh, that it should have and because we know that we need it in Africa and in many of our countries on the continent. So it has been a kind of a, an investment on our part, as you say. Um, all the partners have come in with uh, their expertise, their strength. Uh, it is a multi-million uh, initiative. And we are hoping that after the first two years of its pilot phase, we will a be able to bring in other partners and uh, other collaborators so that we can scale up and really make this project sustainable and the way that it, uh, so that it kind of runs on its own steam and we are able to reach as many learners, as many teachers as possible and really transform the education landscape in, in, uh, on Africa.